think we all want travel to be as amazing as it looks in the photos. We want to experience that. We want our clients to experience that. But to get there, we need to understand what's going on behind the scenes and how to improve it. Hi, I'm Doug Lansky, and this is the first of a series of videos I'm doing in collaboration with Travel Weekly. Today, I want to try to tackle what I think is maybe the biggest problem with travel. The core of the system is fundamentally broken. Okay, maybe broken is the wrong word. It was never actually working. Now, I'm not talking about the individual tourism issues. I'll get to those in future videos and offer solutions. I'm talking about the fact that we don't really have a structure in place to fix the problems, even if we wanted to. Okay, let me back up a little. Tourism is quite unique in that it was up and running long before any tourism professionals jumped in front of this parade and pretended to be leading it. The first travel agency started about 260 years ago. Tour groups and operators started about 180 years ago. And one of the world's first tourist welcome centers opened in Grenoble, France in 1889. And the French National Tourist Office opened in 1910. The news then took a long time to spread to the US, where the first tourism welcome center opened in Michigan along the highway in 1935. And it wasn't until 1965 that the first marketing effort, Discover America, was rolled out to urge Americans to see their own country. In the UK, the Tourism Development Act started four years later in 1969. So in other words, tourism was up and going, and then these marketing organizations jumped out in front of it, added some advertising, and took credit for the arrival of all the visitors. The thinking was, if some tourism is good, more tourism must be better. And that thinking works up until a point. It's like with cars. All those cool new automobiles started arriving in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and we went collectively car crazy. It was all about style and our personal brand and the fun of driving and making more roads and the car dealers were making money. The economy was benefiting from car sales and highway construction. But then pollution arrived and car accidents, and traffic jams, and parking issues. So we created a transportation authority to try to sort that stuff out. With so many cars, we realized we could no longer have all those freedoms. We put in tighter emission controls, traffic lights, traffic signs, highways, parking meters, seat belts, airbags. We made people get driving licenses. It's far from a perfect solution, but at least we were making an effort. But coming back to tourism, what have we done about too many visitors? We had created marketing organizations to hand out brochures and take out ads and run commercials. That was our main tourism organizational structure. And they were getting bonuses and promotions for bringing in more visitors. So when the severe tourism overcrowding issues arrived, their only real tools were to market or not market. In other words, they were driving the bus using only the gas pedal. Plus, there's no mandate nor authority really built into that organization to manage tourism. And they're marketing professionals. They don't likely have the education and experience to start managing visitors, even if they wanted to. So before we can begin to tackle any of the major issues of tourism, we really need a new type of structure. We need some kind of tourism management, the equivalent of the Department of Transportation. And that management needs to have real authority to do what's needed, even if that means limiting travel. Now, I know when I say limiting travel, it sounds like I'm saying everyone's going to make less money. That couldn't be further from the truth. Imagine if the transportation authority wasn't allowed to put up traffic lights or stop signs or parking meters because those things impeded our natural flow of traffic and our rights to stop and go as we please. We wouldn't have gotten very far. In fact, when the first traffic lights were proposed, there was understandable resistance. I mean, you can almost imagine the conversation. So you're telling me we can speed up the flow of traffic by putting in these lights to stop it? That's insane. 
but now we know that clearly works. Stopping it, managing it, actually makes it go faster. Similarly, with some smart management controls, we can earn more money from tourism while making it a better experience for visitors and locals and the environment. But to do that, we need to move beyond marketing and set up a new type of tourism organization and staff it with people who have the skills to manage. That's all for today. I hope you'll join me for future installments of this series. Just a five minute or so quick dose to give you a fundamental understanding of some of these key topical issues that the industry is wrestling with. These insights may help you personally capitalize on new trends or keep you informed so you can lend your voice to urge politicians and associations toward making positive changes that this industry needs to stay ahead. Until next time.